Hi there YouTube, this is John Burns with John Burns Fine Art. Thanks for being here today. Uh, we're going to be working on the mold for Andromeda here. I'm going to start out with the inner jacket, which is going to be uh, silicone. Rebound 25 from the uh, Smooth On company. I'm also going to be using a product of theirs called Thyvex, which helps thicken it. Rebound 25 is for vertical surfaces and the uh, Thyvex helps it spread like peanut butter so we can definitely stand up silicone while it's wet, which is great. So um, if this is of interest to you, stick around. Please hit the subscribe button. Uh, please hit the like button and check out the description below. My social media links are there. You can see more of my work and what goes on behind the scenes and uh, the items and equipment that I use in my studio. So uh, let's get going. The good thing about Rebound 25 is that um, it makes one to one ratio. There's no weighing. You can eyeball it. So I'm just gonna, for the first layer, you never use that much and a lot of it typically will run and pool and settle. So the first layer is very thin. We're just gonna capture the detail. That's it. So I'm gonna make a smaller batch. One cup this size could easily cover her entirety and these arms here. So what I ended up doing with the arms, uh, I'm not gonna do a block mold. I did the dimensions and it's just too much silicone. It's not economic. So I made these sprue funnels and I attached them and then I put a straw across here just to add support. This really serves no other purpose. So I will cover this with silicone and I'll cover this up with silicone uh, up to here and I can always trim that back to where I need it. Okay, but don't go chintzy and only bring it up here. You know, bring it up. Okay, so I'm just gonna set this upside down with the hands on one of these cushions that you get from an Amazon package. Kind of these uh, little air pillows. So I can set it on top of the funnels and rock it back on this and it's safe. And I can actually uh, put the silicone on it this way too and let that first layer cure, flip it over and then peel this off and then go and do the backside. Uh, you know, you know, I think so. Okay, and the other thing I wanna point out is that I'm gonna be speeding this up probably times eight because it's about as fun as watching paint dry. So hopefully you dig the tunes that I put with it. And uh, if you're ever wondering which container you should pour into which, if you use the same containers, base and to the catalyst. I'm just gonna use a mixing stick and then I'm gonna use a chip brush A regular old chip brush to brush it in there. So I am uh, mixing this here one to one as I said and you can see how the two parts are separated by the color. I'm only going to put you through this once with the mixing because I want to make sure that you see what we're looking for here. So I scrape the sides and I scrape the bottom and I keep mixing until the white is uh, completely mixed in where I can't see it anymore. It usually takes about three minutes. And uh, make sure you scrape your stick off as I'm doing there. And uh, once you have that all mixed up, you can begin to apply it. If you want to degas it, you can. Um, but do make sure that as you're pouring this, do what they call the high pour method and or a very thin stream because this helps eliminate air bubbles in the trail as it gets on the sculpture. And then when you go over some of the areas that tend to have a deeper recess, you can blow on that and uh, several times if you need to, just to make sure you get the air out of those areas. So I have this times eight. So if you see this product running, where it looks like it's running quickly, it's actually running very slowly. So there is a limited pot life with this product, about 30 or 40 minutes, and then it's gonna start gumming up 
and it's not going to move around as easily. Uh, make sure when you do things around the toes and on the base where you've signed your name that you don't miss any areas that air might be trapped. So um, let it sit for maybe a few minutes and then after a few minutes go by you can examine those areas where it's kind of run a little more thin and you can usually see some type of space that hasn't been filled behind the silicone. So just blow on that as best you can or if you have compressed air very gently release some compressed air and work those air bubbles out. So on the second coat, we mix it up the same as before, one to one, and we're going to put in the Thyvex. I do about five mil per pint, and that gives me a pretty good consistency. And what's great about that is now we can truly uh, paint this vertically up the sculpture and use it on these smaller pieces without uh, concern of it running. So as you can see, I'm just applying more of the silicone as I go. I can see areas that need worked. And as you're applying this uh, thicker silicone to the cracks, really make sure you're not just buttering it over without making sure those cracks are filled really kind of blot the stick on top of those recesses to make sure that those crevices get filled properly. Okay. Now I have the stick here, I'm applying it to the sculpture. Do not use the brush. I mean, if you want to give it a shot, you can see what I mean firsthand, but dab the brush into these detailed areas like the face, the nose, and uh, don't be afraid to go thin at first to make sure that you get all of the air out of those really deep recesses. And then you can begin to kind of butter it over like a butter knife. And some of those pinch point areas, you'll notice that I was pushing that through from one side only. Um, as that comes through, I can make sure that there's no air getting trapped in there because if you try to push the silicone through, on both sides, there's a good chance you're gonna have some trapped air. And with that thin base coat, you never really know how that's gonna behave. So make sure that uh, all that air is uh, out of there before you smooth more of the thick stuff over it. So make sure you get all the uh, crevices first after you get the crevices like between the legs and the facial details and your undercuts and things like that smoothed over, then you can begin to apply more of it on top of the uh, round forms. So I know that this looks like I'm moving very quickly, but of course that's just an illusion. Um, I took my time and I do take my time on these because this is a mold and the idea is that you're going to be making many copies and uh, you want to make sure you get it right. So you, uh, you have less work to do on the other side when you have your casting. So, you know, smooth it over, round out the um, high points, and make sure that those high points don't have hooks because as you make your mother mold, what's gonna end up happening is uh, that will cause trouble when you're trying to reseed it in the mother mold. Of course, if you do end up having hooks after the silicone is cured, you can use an X-Acto knife or any other type of sharp blade and just trim that back. So, you know, look it over between coats and make sure that it's uh, as smooth as you can get it within reason and get it ready for the next layer. So in this layer here, I'm starting out by coating these arms. Um, this is left over from the that second batch. So I'm not afraid to set this down on top of that little silicone block that I have there because this will adhere to that and I can trim around it if and when it gets stuck. And it does. And I trim it back. So continue to uh, set this up. I used a scrap piece of silicone under the fingertips. This is Silk Pig. This is a very concentrated pigment. It doesn't take much. And you just put a little bit in your batch 
And this is going to help us distinguish between the layers. So where we have the base code in the second layer, I just put this on my stick and stir it in. It gives me a little darker tone. Of course, I'm putting in a little more Thyvex to thicken it up. And I can spread that on. And this color differentiation allows me to see where I've been and where I haven't been. If you've ever tried to apply silicone without having some something to help you distinguish, whether it's the uh, texture that you're applying it on with or the color, um, sometimes you can get some really thin spots. And it ends up showing up sometimes when the uh, silicone tears, or if you end up having, like you're uh, cutting your mold open and you have a thin spot. So make sure you get everything as consistently as you can. And this is a good time to start using your mixing stick as a butter knife to create a smoother form. So maybe you were a little uh, distressed that your mold wasn't quite as smooth as you wanted it on the first few layers. You know, you can definitely continue to work at it with subsequent layers and get it more smooth. Okay, so the arms look like they were thick enough. I went ahead and set them to the side. I didn't show it, but I put some more of that uh, red mix on there. And yeah, it was thick enough that I'm not gonna add that final layer. So you can see on this final layer here, I didn't need to put any uh, different color in there because the base color is of course different. Uh, so I can see where I'm working again. And I'm trying to round out any hooks the best I can to give myself the best opportunity with the mother mold because as we start to put our parting lines in it uh, we want to make sure we have the most opportunities in case we need to change plans which i did with this one uh, where my parting line was originally going to be i decided afterwards that um, i needed to move it and because the form was rounded out as well as it was um, it didn't create too much grief for me so stick around for those other videos that show uh, how to make the mother mold, how to get the pipe out of the back, and how to cut a mold open to do a slice mold. So that does it here. Those are all the layers that I'm gonna do. It should give me an overall thickness of about three eighths of an inch. There might be three sixteenths of an inch up to, you know, about, I don't know, half an inch maybe in some places. This is where we're at. Thank you guys for coming along and keep an eye out for the mother mold video and the video that shows how to remove the pipe from the back and how to repair the sculpture over molded. Thanks for coming along guys and stick around here. And if you would like to support my channel, check me out on PayPal at John Burns Fine Art. And I do get back to the local charities so I appreciate your support in that way. Take care.